Okay, so I'm going to give you some tips for the exam about how sometimes they do their code. Because sometimes you might be asked to fill in the gaps. So tip number one, the exam board will sometimes do this. So we've got, at the moment, seven items in this list. They might do this. So if I printed out the length here, for example, that will give us six. Now, then what they'll do is get rid of this, so I for iron range, and it'll do it zero to the length, which is six, instead of having it as length equals length minus one like that. That's the first thing they'll do. Now, they would also inside this while loop, but not inside the full loop, take away one from the length. So what that does, and it makes sense, it makes it even more efficient. Every time we loop, it will first of all loop six, and make sure that this is the biggest value. The second time it loops, it should end up with 42 being here, I'm just going to put this here, and 26 here. The next time it loops, it will only go up to 26 position. So then it will put 32 here, 26 here. The next time it loops, it will only go up to position 4, or should we say 3. Because it's always going to have, by the time it finishes a loop, the largest number to the right. So to make it even more efficient than simply having no swaps, we could also reduce the length. So in the exam, number one, in a fill in the gap exercise, they could do this, reduce the length, minus one here, and just have it to the length here. And then have a variable at the bottom of a while loop, which takes away one from the length each time, to make our scope smaller. Another thing the example could do is use a repeat loop instead of a while loop. Try and change it into a repeat loop right now. Okay, to change this to a repeat loop, we simply would put repeat, get rid of this, and at the bottom, until no swaps equals true. And obviously this needs to be inside a repeat loop. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a past paper question or two to do. Okay, pause the video and then give it a go. Okay, it might have helped if you can when you're going through this try and write up the whole code. So pause the video and write out the whole code. It'll help us when we go through the masking. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in. And let's go to certain parts of this. Max index equals 20. That's done for us. So we know it's one to 20. Because we know it's one to 20, the number of items we're gonna have is going to be, this is like doing our length, I suppose. So, number of items is going to be our length. It's max index minus one or 19. Now, we don't need to do the length check because they've given us a number here. But we do need to make sure that it's going to be either minus one or 19. Because that's going to be the same as doing len max index minus one. But we don't need to do that because it, we're just dealing with as a variable number rather than a list. So our outer loop would be the outer one to max index minus one. You could also do, but I'm going to tell you why we're not going to do number of items here in a bit. So keeping as max index minus one here or putting 19 makes sense. 
for inner, 1 to number of items. Number of items was 19. Items minus 1. We do our switch. We do our switch. We do our switch. And we end the for loop. But what we're going to do is we're going to make number of items minus 1 to become smaller. So when we do our inner loop, remember what we said last time? I think it was on this one. Maybe it wasn't, whatever. Remember what I said last time? Once we've got this in order, so we're going to have ninth. Let's imagine that we're using this one to 64, it's going to be down here. And 34 is going to be here. Because we're minusing 1 from the inner loop, we're only going to go up to here this time. So, oops. If I zoom out, there we go. So please note, number of items isn't going to be the same as max index. The two different variables. The reason being is this is always going to be 19. This is going to keep going down by one to make sure that when we're sorting through our iteration we're not having to keep going right all the way to the end. We can just go up to a certain point and the next time we loop through, up to a certain point. Okay, now by looking at this code, is this the efficient way or the inefficient way of doing this? So your next question is, can you explain or do both of these. Explain why the algorithm in part A is inefficient and explain what you would do to improve the efficiency of this algorithm. Okay, pause the video, give it a go. So, you should have done this by now. Let's have a look. It's inefficient because you keep looping, you keep doing comparisons, you keep iterating after the array has already been sorted. So it's inefficient code because of that. So it's been sorted, but you'll still have to keep looping through because of this outer loop. So what can we do to better? We'll use a flag like we did with the uh, no swap flag. If any swaps are taking place, it'll be set to false, which means that at the end of the inner loop, it'll go back to the while loop again if flag is still true, it'll stop the loop. If there's no changes, however, in the inner loop, I think it was this code, if there's no changes in it, so we don't do this, then this source will become true and break the loop. If there are changes, no source will become false and we'll be forced to loop again. That's basically what you're explaining. So if you mention the word flag, if you mention that in the inner loop, you would set it to be false if a change has been made. And on the outer loop, you set it to be true to begin with, so that it has a chance to break the loop if, in the inner loop, no swaps be made. That would get you five marks in total. I'm going to give you another question. Okay, I would like for you to write program code to do this. Have a look at it. But you need to make sure that you perform an efficient bubble sort. So with this, you might need to use a number of different skills. Pause the video, give it a go. Okay, so the first things first, if we were to do an array of what it wants, it wants a six digit string ID number like two, one, two, three, 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 and then the name is someone like Nick Smith. And then let's have someone else. Let's do one, zero, one. Let's do actually two, one, 
one three 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 and it's gonna be Lucy Rowe. So we've got PID, PID, the name, the name. And your job is to sort this out into order. How many of you decide to do it whereby you were to slice on your checks? That would work. So you can slice, check this, check it against this. Which one's bigger? If this is bigger than this, you switch. So we're doing it smallest to largest. Okay. That's one way, but here's the thing. In a bubble sort, it'll basically take the whole string. It will then, when we should see if this is i greater than i plus one, do it by character, by character. So we'll check this character and this character. Is this bigger than this? No, it's not, it's the same. So it'll check this against this. It'll check this against this. There's a difference. Therefore, this whole string is already bigger than this string here. So it'll do a swap. What that basically means is we don't actually need to slice. So if I was going to show you the code, pause the video, this would be my code. It's the same as always. There's no difference with this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. And it still sorts it out in order when I run it. So could you slice this and check it? Yes, you could. Do you need to? No, you don't. It makes it more than what it needs to be. It treats it as one string as it is. Now, if we go back to the question, it says we need to put this into a procedure. So that's easy enough, because all we have to do to turn this into a procedure is to finish this off by doing the following. If I was to do def, I'm going to call it, did it give us a name? Bubble sort. Bubble sort. And we're going to put all the sugar, all of this, into there. Boom. Now we don't need this count either. I just did that to prove a point. Obviously, if I run it now, nothing's going to happen because what do we need to do? You got it. We need to call it. Are we returning anything to the main code? No. Okay, I'd like to give this a go yourself to see if you can actually fill in the gaps. Now keep in mind, remember what we learned about the pseudocode version and how the exam board might do it. Pause the video, give it a go. Okay, so if we're going to do this ourselves, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got max index equals 20, so number of items will equal 19 because remember we're using that as our length minus 1. We're going to go for outer 1 to 19 and for inner 1 to number of items which then if we want the whole point of this number of items is to make the list get smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of 
um, if I just quickly switch back to um, Python, 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 Python. Remember what we said, first time it runs, boom, second time we want it to, it would have basically switched web around. So we don't need to go to the end of it, it would just compare that one to that one. So in that case, what do we want number of items to do? You got it, we want number of items, sorry, number of items equals number of items minus one, because we want it to keep going smaller and smaller. Where'd it go, where'd it go? All right, but we're not done. We now got our inner part, and this is the easy bit. If items inner, so we know that this is i, so we know that the next one has to be item list. Inner plus one, we know that. Now, we don't even need to think this through, we can just look for patterns here. So if we know that item list inner is here, we know that this has to be item list inner plus one. So we're putting whatever's in item list inner plus one into item list inner, which means that we would have lost whatever's in item list inner. So how can we not lose it? Well, we will put this into temp. So we know that the one above would be item list inner, so we don't lose it. So we put whatever's in, let's imagine we've got zero, we've got one, and we've got four in there, we've got two in there. There's gonna be a swap. We don't want to lose that four, so that four has to go into temp. So we know that, and that tells us this with the remaining code we've got. We then got item list inner plus one, so we know that we need to put something in there, and it's going to be temp, spelled the same way. Ta -da. Done. The next question would probably be, how can we make this code more efficient, or what's the problem with this code? If you can answer that, you've nailed it.